Photography 101 is back. My name is Jimmy Chang, and in this video, I want to show you how you can improve your photography without learning new skills, buy a new lens, or even cameras. In fact, without spending a single penny. I know you've seen a ton of videos on tips and tricks, showing you how to maximize your equipment so you can have a better chance in capturing your dream shots. Well, don't get me wrong, they're all great stuff and important too. But I want to be frank with you, I'm not a camera guru, not at all, but I am a photographer and I make a living from it. So all I know is how to use the camera to its full advantage. Before we start, this video is not a tutorial and I assume that you have basic knowledge on exposure triangle and how to achieve desired exposure values for your shots. And if you do, and that's great. But even if you're a beginner, some tips may still be beneficial. So let's get started. Tip number one, think. This is by far one of the most common mistakes photographers make. They press the shutter button far too often and too randomly without any sort of thinking. Taking a great photograph requires careful mental processing. All these gorgeous photos you see around often takes a long time to take. And even in street photography, it's not just about snapping either. Photographers' observations and decision to make that shot is based on time and light. And that decision is what makes the photo. Of course, there will be time that luck comes into play. And one may just happen to be taking that photo at the right place and time, with the correct light of course. But that is luck, pretty random and rare. Successful photographers actually make those shots. And with a bit of luck, they get a master photograph. And this is also what separates the greats and the noobs. And I often ask my students to slow down and don't go trigger happy. Carefully observe the surrounding, assess the light, consider all the elements that you would like to include in the frame. Checking all the angles and adapt, wait for that moment before pressing the shutter button. And thinking is what creates the narrative and substance in your photography. Random shot is just random, even when it is perfectly exposed, but without the final execution, it's just another photo. Tip number two, master your current gear. Well, I never said that camera gear is not important. Of course they are. But if I have to be frank, a capable photographer can pick up anything and create something spectacular. And that is a fact. So what's the point of buying the latest and the greatest? Well, you may hate me saying this, but get it if you have gas and just enjoy buying. But if you're a true photographer, get it only if you can exploit the very last ounce of camera performance. For instance, what's the point of getting a 100 megapixel camera if you don't do large print? And what's the point of getting a camera that can shoot 60 frames per second if all you do is family holiday snaps? And what's the point of getting a camera capable of 18 stop dynamic range with 16 bit raw if all you do is to post on Instagram? <laughs> right? None of them make sense, right? But photography is about enjoyment, whether it's buying gear or actual photography. In here, I'm not going to discourage you from acquiring your favorite camera or lens. I'm only talking about photography and how you can improve your craft. So anything would do the job really. And whatever you have right now is more than enough. But when I say master your gear, I mean you've got to know every inch of your camera and lens. You need to be able to operate your camera fluently so you can adapt to changes and set your camera quick enough to react. Remember, timing is everything in photography. And if you don't know your gear well enough, you may miss the moment. Once it's gone, it's gone. Tip number three, practice. This may sound trivial, but in reality, most people don't practice enough. It's okay if you're a beginner and don't know what type of photography you really enjoy. But once you've found it, it's time to dig in deep and start mastering your skills for that particular genre of photography. For instance, I mentioned about street photography and its discipline earlier. But what about wildlife? If you want to take great animal shots, not only you need to know your gear, but you also need to know your subject. Great wildlife photographers know animals more than you may think. They study their habitat and behavior so they know when is the best time for a certain type of shot. But to get a great photograph of animal, practice is everything. Studying can only get you so far, but practice gets you a shorter reaction time. 
learn to anticipate for those photos that you want since you picked up your first wildlife photo book. And therefore, practice. And I mean, get out after this video and go and shoot. Tip number four, learn to process your photos. Well, sadly, the days when you have a great printer helping you to get the most out of your photos are gone. Yes, there are digital photo editors out there, but those are for commercial jobs that requires a repetitive processing, such as weddings and events. Perfecting digital darkroom skills not only helps you get the most out of your photography, but it can also create your own signature when it comes to photography style. Yes, style can mean many things. And you can have your shooting styles, your storytelling style, but processing is also part of it by adding your own colors. Well, when I say that, it means that you're not just an other photographer using presets. I know many always talk about out of camera JPEGs, but hey, unless you want your photos to look like others, it's time to skill up in post processing skills. And you don't need to be a master in photo manipulations, but the basics in extracting all the details, making emphasis on your subject by using dodge and burns, for instance, and so forth. And even converting black and white is not as simple as desaturating your photos. Though I do use a software called Next Silver FX Pro for all my black and white photography, a powerful mono conversion processor that allows you to do some old school style that wound processing in digital form, of course, but that's for another day. But if you want to learn more about it, remember to tell me in this comment section down below. I will, however, leave a link in the description if you want to check out the software first. Anyway, clicking the shutter button is only halfway, and the other half is in the post processing. There are many options out there, free and pay. If you want some ideas, also leave a question in the section below. Tip number five, get inspired, but don't get desired. <laughs> well, what I mean is that check out other people's photos in terms of quality and skill sets, like exposure, processing, and composition. But don't get disappointed if you can't get those shots because you can't have the same models or location. And these desirable things are only superficial. Remember, grass is always greener on the other side. You have your own grass and when you master your shots, others would probably feel the same because they can't have the same models or the same location that you have too. And this is because of you and you are the photographer who brought the best out of your subject. Remember, it's like seeing a portrait of a celebrity. Almost automatically, you will consider to be a great photograph, but it's not always the case. Much of the effect is because of the celebrity him or herself. A great portrait requires careful planning, execution, and the chemistry and communication between you and the subject. The truth is, when you become a famous photographer, anything you take becomes a talking point. Inspiration comes from creativity and how he or she creates those photographs and not the elements within because everyone can create his or her own photographs with different ingredients. Never get confused with desirability of a photograph. And that's it for this week's Photography 101. Remember, I have a whole series dedicated in improving your photography in a non-technical way. You can bookmark this playlist at the end of this video or click the link in the description. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this video and if you do, give me a thumb, yay! Two very boring minutes later. And sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography and filmmaking. And of course, Olympus. See you next time. Peace. Well, you wouldn't believe me. This is the second time I'm recording this episode. The very first time was this morning. I was shitting in my kitchen as usual. And uh, <laughs> guess what? I forgot to change the uh, recording mode in my camera. So the HDMI out was actually in monitor mode instead of record or raw mode. Uh, uh, yeah, because I'm using an external monitor, but yeah. Things happen, I forgot to change the back and then everything just ruined. I mean, I have the focusing box highlight in my face. You see all the info on the uh, 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 on the actual screen itself, like the battery level. But anyway, it's, it just, yeah, things happen. Shit happens. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I finished this now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this particular 101. And uh, yeah, as usual, I have a lot to talk about in terms of photography. And it's all through my experience uh, working in the field for the last you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, it's all practical, it's nothing to do with 
camera settings and things like that. Uh, it's a lot to do with psychological actually, but uh, to be quite honest, you know, if you're a photographer, um, psychological preparations and uh, things like that, it really actually is the main part of it because gear is really secondary. It's just the extension of your, of your vision and you control it and you control it to take that photograph, right? It's not to do with the actual feature itself. I mean, it helps you, but it's not really, you know, the camera doesn't take the photo for you, right? You are the guy who actually taking it. So that's what this 101 series is all about. And uh, you remember, if you guys really enjoy it, stay tuned stay tuned and uh, i don't all i don't often make the one-on-one -on -one videos but if i do I usually talk about a lot of different things uh outside of what you normally hear about tips and tricks and uh, so if you find it interesting that's good that's good that means you are halfway there to be a great photographer <laughs> anyway i'll see you now next time and uh, enjoy your day wherever you are i'll see you all very soon bye for now